Welcome to the Pinelander Podcast, the official podcast of Pineland, broadcasting to you from an undisclosed location deep inside Pineland, where we discuss faith, family, finances, firearms, freedom, food, and everything else in between with those who believe in living free and living out the values that made this country free. Welcome to the Pine Lantern Podcast. My name is Paul Favor. I'm here with uh, my Ranger buddy, Mike Blackburn. Today is Friday, the 22nd of December. And, uh, you know, it's almost Christmas, Mike. We're almost there. It is. And we've got a very special guest today. We do. we got a guest. His name is Brandon Real. Uh, this is a man I've known for a while. He's a uh, avid hunter. Uh, he's uh, from Montana. Uh, he's also a veteran of the Special Forces, uh, 10th Group, the Originals. The originals. Uh, no, uh, uh, no disrespect to the others. That, you know, not everybody can be in the best group, but that's just how it is. But, uh, but yeah, Brandon is a, uh, is a hunter. He's been there, done that. He's got uh, a lot of experiences hunting. And uh, so we wanted to, like, cap the year. So this is like the no, you know, uh, pressure, Brandon, but we're kind of tying all the loose, uh, loose ends of this year together and just met, let it all hang on hunting because that's, uh, I mean, what is more American than that? I mean, yeah, we do, we do firearms, we do freedom, uh, but we don't get the food very often. And this is the time to eat. Yeah. And, and it's deer season. It is. Uh, I've uh, snacked on uh, Brandon's venison chili. It's awesome. In fact, he, uh, just a little story before we get started, uh, he brought in some uh, venison chili uh, when we're out working at SUT. And uh, it had the uh, crock pot going. I found out about it, and I kept hitting it. And he said, hey, bro, <laughs> save some for everybody else. And it was so good. I just, I, I can't help myself. I don't know what he put into, in it, but it, it, is, it is really it's good. It's a secret recipe. Well, Brandon, welcome to the Pinelander Podcast. Welcome to the G-Base. Thank you. Yeah, man. So uh, uh, there were so many things I want us to talk about as we get this thing started, but uh, before we get going, uh, the, the f- one thing I want everybody to know is Brandon's also working on, on a book because yes. we are publishers. Uh, it's one of our hats we wear, but uh, his book is entitled From Hoof to Table, A Warrior's Guide to Hunting. So anyway, I'm setting the whole stage, but uh, I want everybody to know about that. And we're kind of talking about how we're building your book. But uh, yeah, I just want to introduce you and just let you uh, talk a little bit and let us shut up. Uh, so how sure. you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. It's um, it's good to be here. And just to be honest, you know, this is all new for me. Um, first book and first podcast. So um, case of beer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm super excited. Um, I've been deer hunting my whole life, and this is uh, I think this is a good um, starting point for me in this in this realm. Um, you know, getting to author a book is um, it's a privilege. Um, I get to share a lot of my experiences, um, being how I get to decide what goes in the book. Um, I've put a lot of personal stories into this book, and it's it's almost like the pinnacle of my life. Um, all my hunting stories from a kid all the way to now. Um, a lot of stories um, that I'm putting in the book. Since I'm writing it right now during hunting season, um, there's actually stories from this season that are in the book. All the way back to my first deer I've ever killed. So, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. One, one, one of the things that I am really excited about this book is because I I know there's a lot of people that love hunting, and there's a lot of avid hunters. My feeling, though, is that there's less and less young boys that get to experience it today mm-hmm. than, than in the past. And I think it's because we've become more of an urban society. I mean, more people live in the cities, and it's it's a little tougher. Um, if you live out in the country like I did when I grew up in the country, it was pretty easy to go hunting. Matter of fact, um, I don't even know if we paid attention that much to hunting season um, right. when I was growing up. Um, but of course, you know, you get smarter as you get as you get older. But I mean, hunting was just really just kind of um, something that you just did. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because when hunting season did roll around, um, nobody went to school. And it was kind of weird, but it was, like, accepted that the teachers just all knew that the kids were not going to (laughs) be showing up for school. And I don't know if that was the way it was in Montana, but it certainly was in Missouri where I grew up. So 
I think this is just an awesome um, topic for today's youth, especially because I think they need to kind of like catch the the fervor of it. The I think there's so many benefits to going out there and learning like just any primal skill, building a fire, building a shelter, hunting, whatever. I mean, these are the things I think are missing today in society. Oh, absolutely. And um, it's funny you say that. That's probably the main force behind why I'm writing this book. Um, I was talking with Paul, you know, a few weeks ago or a few months ago, whenever it was before I started writing. And um, it's, it's been, it's been fun, you know, bringing Paul back to hunting and I've got to hunt with him a few times this year. And that's kind of what inspired me to do this. It's it's like, well, you know, how many times throughout my career um, have I ran across guys that said, I wish, I wish I would, I could go hunting or I wish my dad did that with me when I was a kid. And so, that's the driving force behind the book is, is, you know, the warrior's guide to hunting. It's just, it's breaking down, um, Barney style from start to finish. How does a guy get into it? You know, at a, at a, as an adult or at an older age that wants to just go do it. So I don't talk about anything crazy in the book. It's all basics. Um, but it, it can go start to finish and get a guy in the woods. So that's, what's fun about, uh, this book is, <clears throat> As Brandon said, he's got me back into it. I mean, I had uh, took a deer back in '02, and so it's been a hot minute. And so I'm actually his student. I've been a student for a little while, and then so uh, he's feeding the the chapters of the book as we are interacting. And, so it's and awesome. Then, and then you've passed the goodness forward because you just you just took me hunting. Yeah, it's been a hot <laughs> minute for you. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's funny because um, you know all of us have served in the military. And it's funny because, like, when I was younger, I mean, I obviously had more time to do a lot of the things I enjoy doing. But when you get, you know, you get older, you get in the military, I mean, it's just, you know, it becomes one of those things that's kind of like you got to make time for it. You just don't, you don't have the time. And if you spend a lot of time uh, training as hard as we did and being deployed and what have you, sometimes it's like you get out of the woods or whatever, you, you, know, you dump your ruck, you come back, and... For a lot of us, you know, the thought of going camping or going hunting is probably not high on the list mm-hmm. because now you're back, you know, you're back at the house, you got the wife, you got the honeydew list, you got the kids. Um, but one thing I remember about you, Brandon, was you'd never let that stand in the way of hunting. <laughs> um, and it was always just kind of fun because, I mean, you kind of had your priorities right. I mean, I hate to say that, but you really had your priorities right. I mean, you, there was things that you just loved that were who you were. And, uh, and, and it was, and it's kind of contagious. So being around you is kind of, kind of fun because it, it gets us, you know, kind of rekindling to those things that we always knew were important. And it's funny when you go out hunting, I mean, the, we talk about the benefits of it. It's, it's more than it's, you know, the killing the animal obviously is, is, is the end state of that thing. But I mean, there's so much that you get from hunting. Maybe you could share some of that with, with the audience, because I mean, I think there's just a ton of life skills that you get from, from that whole experience. Sure. Um, yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, understanding the why behind why I did that is probably what most people don't understand um, and why I still do it. Um, because there is some sacrifice to it. Time, obviously, away from family and friends is the biggest one. Um, especially, you know, I was married at the time. Um, not anymore. That obviously uh, played a factor into that. But, um, um, anyways, um, I think the best way to describe it, you know, would be just to go all the way back to when I was a kid, um, in Montana, you had to be 12 in order to get a big game hunting license to, to hunt deer. Um, but I was ready to go before that, like eight, nine years old. I was ready to, I was ready to get in the woods and, and kill stuff. My dad uh, brought me up in that. We went camping and fishing and hunting all the time, um, and so just the drive to do it, I think, is what gets me doing it. And then um, once I did kill my first deer at 12 years old, um, the, the feeling I got from that, I don't know. It's just like an adrenaline dump. You know, when you see the deer, the big ones there, and you just get that. I still get that today. And there's no substitute for that. You know, I think I mentioned something in the book about Jumping out of a plane is about the only thing that comes close to that feeling, but even still, it's not the same, and um, that's why I do it, because every time I see a deer, you know, the beginning of every season, 
that deer steps out and all that work that you put into going into it, getting your getting up early and getting all your gear ready, getting in the woods and being quiet for hours and hours and hours, you know, and um, when that big one finally steps out, that feeling that I get, you know, just that sense of accomplishment. And, you know, God put these creatures on this earth for us to enjoy and just to be out in their environment and to be able to take them in their environment, you know, it's, it's primal. Um, and that's how it's been done from the beginning of time. You know, we go out and we kill our food and, um, it just connects me to God. It connects me to nature, uh, to myself. And, um, there's just no, no other thing like it. Do you do a lot of, do you do a lot of thinking when you're out there? Oh yeah. <laughs> Contemplating the, the, uh, the, the meaning of life. Spend a lot of time with God and, uh, in those, in those tree stands. You know, it's funny. You, you, you talked about, um, animals and you talked about sort of our dominion over uh, the earth um and i'll be honest with you I, I recently got back from africa and africa is a little bit different kind of place <coughs> um because it was the first time that i felt small was in africa uh around the animals you, you do not mess around in africa um there's you're you're kind of low on the on the food chain uh, went and spent uh, some time down in the lower Zambezi River. Well, you don't go swimming in the Zambezi River unless you want to get ate. Uh, everything, uh, everything down there will eat you. Uh, hippopotamus, um, you know, crocodiles, you name it. Um, just driving around um, uh, where I was at, um, if you had a herd of elephant or something come out, dude, you stopped the car. Um, you know, it's... You have to give things their uh, their space and their respect, and it was funny because uh, it was sort of mutual. So I'll, I'll get to, just to give you a story, um, we were down there camping, and it's funny because the animals down there they kind of recognize humans' area, and we are required to recognize their area. It's a sort of a mutual respect. It's, it was kind of strange. Uh, the the elephants and things would come right into the campground, but they knew that they were in your area, mm-hmm. and they kind of treated it with respect. And I think um, that's kind of like it was kind of enlightening for me was kind of realizing that you know we all have to sort of spare uh, share the space and respect one another. And I think hunting has a lot to do with that that sort of realization. Yeah, um, it's definitely um, challenging. Um, I've, I've never been to Africa, just disclaimer up front. Um, uh, there is a couple animals that uh, are on my bucket list over there, but, um, the main focus of the book is the white tailed deer. Um, obviously hunting is a very general term. Um, and there's hundreds of different game you can hunt. So trying not to get too broad, I tried to focus in on just that. Um, one being, um, that's 90% of what I hunt is deer hunting, um, being in, the southeastern part of the U.S., um, that is the prevalent thing to hunt. But for what you just said, applying it to the deer, you know, that's um, – th- they own most of the land. There's deer everywhere here. Um, if anybody's ever been to, you know, Fort Bragg and um, Camp McCall, Fayetteville, Southern Pines, that area, you know, everybody knows, you know, the Carolinas are loaded with deer. There's like 20 million deer in this state. They're in the backyard. Um, you see them in town. You see them out in the woods. Um, you see them crossing the highways. They're everywhere. Just um, asking for it. Yeah, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> but I will say this though. Um, you know, sh- we do share the space with the deer, um, but but it's different. Um, and I don't know if it's the same in Africa. The deer that's in your backyard eating your grandma's tulips aren't the same deer that when you go out into public land and say you're two miles from a road. You know, some of those deer maybe never even seen a human being before, so there is a difference. Well, but uh, I guess I guess the point I was trying to get to is, um, I, I think hunters are conservationists at heart. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. it's not, it's yeah. more than you know. I got it. I, mean, I think everyone understands. You know, you grab the you grab your rifle or, or whatever or bow. Um, you know, you have to go to the location. You have to you, know, you have to get up in this in this tree stand or whatever. But this is a year long sort of um, yeah. lifestyle. Uh, you know, a lot of times you put out food, uh, you do the tracking, there's cameras. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a huge connection with wildlife in general, uh, with, with hunting. I mean, yeah. you have to be connected, right? They say that the, you know, the hunters and the conservationists, um, or the hunters are the conservationists. Like yeah. we are the conservationists. We are the ones 
um, our hunting dollars when you buy a hunting license or whatever, you know, that's going back into animal conservation. Um, and the people who know what they're doing in the state to tell you how many deer you can shoot, how many tags you get, they're looking at numbers to keep a healthy herd and all that. And it it is, it's a giant conservation program. Um, the, the money that we put into it goes right into it. It keeps it going for that next generation. So Brandon, uh, give us a story that kind of sums up, like, uh, uh, your typical hunt, something that, uh, I mean, you were describing that sensation you have. Give us, give us a story where you were like on the edge of your seat when you had something that kind of just, you know, almost threw you out of your, your climber. It's, it's hard to, to, to give you a story that is a typical hunt because, first of all, there's no such thing as a typical hunt. Every single one of them is different. Um, I've spent hours in a tree on the supposedly me thinking it's the best day to go hunting and not, not seen a single thing. And then I've thrown together a hunt last minute you know, barely, barely making it into a tree with an hour of light and then ended up killing a monster, you know? So it's just, uh, and, and that, again, that goes back to, um, the, uh, the thrill of the hunt is because you never know what's going to walk out. You know, when you're out there in the woods, you never know what you're going to see. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but to, um, satisfy your question, you know, a tip, a typical hunt, you know, for me, um, I'm actually going hunting uh, this afternoon um, after this podcast, so I'm going to go back to the house. You know, um, I already know where I'm going to go. Um, that's that's a big part of it is is having a place to go nowadays with all the land being taken up. But um, um, I'm fortunate enough to um, have some friends with private property I can go on. I'm also a member of a hunt club, so. Um, buddy of mine's visiting from out of town we're gonna go back and and grab our gear um probably not go very gear heavy today because we had a big storm yesterday um it's really windy today so if we do see anything it's probably going to be the last hour or so of light so i plan on just uh, grabbing a climber uh, my rifle and and just getting in the tree probably the last couple hours of light to see if anything comes out but that's 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 a typical hunt yeah i like uh you know something that you when you were talking about, you were describing uh, a hunt, you know, that, that, that just kind of gets your, uh, you know, that, that aspect, that primal aspect, uh, I think every man has going. And, uh, you know, I, I, that resonates with me too, is uh, I've been saying since we got started, you got me back into hunting is uh, the only thing that really gets close to me for, to combat. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you're, you're, you're operating as part of the team and you're schwacking guys is a hunt. And, uh, and, and so there's a, there's a value there for me. There's a, it's a therapeutic value. Uh, there is a spiritual value. Obviously there's a, a food value. I mean, obviously, I mean, we, there's a big difference that I've been saying is the difference between schwacking a uh, deer and uh, a Taliban is uh, you're eating the deer. <laughs> One of the things, but, but the, the sense that you get like uh, in Iraq, uh, you know, countdown, blow the doors off the hinge, go in, and you have no idea what's beyond that threshold. You kind of have an idea, but you really don't. Mm-hmm. And so that's the aspect of the hunt that I really dig that you're you're talking about in your book is there's a value to that. Uh, and that's why there's these veteran hunts. Uh, so, I mean, th- if you're out there and you're a veteran, you're like, hey, I'm just kind of, you know, my um, wheels are spinning and just kind of feel funky. I don't know what to do with myself. That is, this is a huge aspect. Man, that's, a great, uh, be, that's, a, that's a great point. Yeah, being a veteran and getting back to getting into this. I mean, really immerse yourself. And you could, and, you know, Brandon, you're like really immersed into this. You is, could, it, is, is it the uncertainty, Brandon? I mean, what what is it? I mean, what is it that uh, that man is supposed to... Uh, be experiencing in life because I mean I, I let me just throw back to public school okay you got boys sitting in the classrooms or they don't even have play they don't even do uh, you know recess anymore right everyone just kind of sit there you know in a, in a seat you know, listen to somebody lecture to them right I mean if you want to destroy boys I mean that's the, probably the best way to do it but what is it about sort of the uncertainty of the hunt you said no hunt no two hunts are the same and I think you're absolutely correct and there is a, there is an aspect of the unknown. And I think there's something about uh, a man that needs to have um, that quick 
decision making process um, challenged, uh, go through the cycle, figure out what to do, act. Am I, you know, yeah, no, crazy that, here? No, what? that completely makes sense. I mean, and I never necessarily thought about it as Paul was just describing it per se, as far as from a combat perspective, but it does kind of make sense how, you know, you're, you're planning your mission, you know, where you're going, you're, you know, actions on the objective, you're going in to, you're going in to take life and, um, ultimately for food. But I mean, I guess the same thought process applies, you know, you have an objective, you know, where you're going, what you're doing. Um, it's therapeutic for me. Yeah. Anyway, I know, I know it has to hit, uh, uh, somebody else that, that spot that they just can't itch mm-hmm. anymore. You know, they're, but uh, yeah, you're right. That's it is all those things you you do, uh, and of course uh, you take pride in having you being armed and, and dangerous, and, and uh, that's that's the idea that that aspect. If you got a spear in your hand, a crossbow, whatever, three hundred eight, whatever it is, uh, you you know that aspect of you have the right to bear arms. It's a uh, you know a tradition of, of being a man and having a weapon. And then being able to, to strike, and then the idea also of uh, I mean, your sniper is you know while invisible, I see and destroy, you know, as being invisible, mm-hmm. and then just just sniping, you know, out of nowhere, you know, that's that's the uh, the beauty of it, and it's all those skills we had in sniping too, right. or the scanning, the Kim's games, you know, the uh, uh, you know where where you know play, I mean, I'm just Brandon is being kind, uh, he's kind to me, but. Basically, he, uh, you know, I've gone off on a couple of hunts with him, and he just, uh, he's like, oh, I didn't even tell you that one thing. You know, he's assuming I know these things. But, but there's, a, there's so much just to picking a tree. If you've got a climber on your back, just picking a tree, mm-hmm. there's a science. I mean, there's a science to this, not only to the lay of the land, to the, to the wind direction, to the type of tree, to the leaning of the tree. To, to to everything. I mean, everything. There's so much in it. It's not just like, oh, there's a tree. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much involved in that. And I one time I went out, uh, I was invited to his hunting lease. I'll give you a little story. So I got to the hunting lease. I picked this tree. And he goes, yeah, just go over there and, you know, face that way. <laughs> so he's assuming I got all this. So I go down into this, this beautiful draw that I saw when the sun came up. But we're in the Uari Mountains. And I picked this pine tree. I didn't pick a very good pine tree. Nope. So I go up probably about maybe 15 feet. No, no, yeah. I don't think you were that high. Yeah, <laughs> probably not even that. Nope. But should have been about probably more like 30 feet. But I, I kind of pushed out, you know, it was, uh, you know, five something in the morning, an hour before the sun comes up. So I'm just kind of shimming up this tree and I've got my little headlamp on. And uh, so I, I broke probably, you know, bazillion rules. Probably made way too much noise. Didn't go up the tree too high. But anyway, as uh, I think it was uh, muzzleload. And uh, so I happened to be facing the right direction, but I was a little bit too far from where this uh, deer path was. And so about, you know, five minutes after sunrise, I see this, I mean, this glorious mountain monarch. You know, I'm, I'm elaborating, but it was probably a good nine or, you know, ten pointer. I was like, wow. And and I was I almost fell out of the, the climber, you know. And I'm just kind of I look like Elmer Fudd. I'm just and I'm just shaking a little bit. I, I've got this uh, my uh, you know the the gun I fired I think once or twice before, and uh, I, I had he was quartering away. The shot would have been absolutely heinous. It was about 100 meters with a gun I shot a couple times before. I didn't want to. I should have shot at it, you know, hindsight. But uh, but yeah, just that just those. Everything we did up to that point was all worth those five seconds of seeing this glorious horned animal just come out of nowhere. And I just, there's a gasp that you have and, and, uh, and a blink. You're blinking and there's a gasp and you see this glorious animal. And that just, if I could encapsulate all that into those five seconds, that was like mm-hmm. close as you can get to combat. Mm-hmm. Because you've got the butterflies... You've got this, you have no idea what's going to happen, and all of a sudden something happens, and you go, mm-hmm. wow. So that was awesome. Of course, I screwed all of that up, <laughs> and he's like, hey, I'm going to stalk to you and see how you're doing. And he comes over and goes, oh, man, that, uh, yeah, you didn't go up the, high, the tree that high. The tree sucked. Uh, your placement sucked. 
I mean, it was just like, he was being nice, but it was like, yeah, you basically sucked. Ball sacks. No, yeah, you did great. And, just to uh, see deer like that is, is amazing. Well, they're, 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 perishable, they're perishable skills, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think Paulie did a great job of kind of uh, articulating the adrenaline that you, oh, yeah, that yeah, you were yeah. talking about. Coursing. Um, <laughs> now, you've been, you've been hunting since a boy, and you nonstop. Um, <laughs> And is that adrenaline still? I mean, do you still feel that just as strong today as you did when you were you were young? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's not necessarily every single deer, you know, because I am a meat hunter too. I try to um, stock up the freezer to um, eat on it all year. Um, so maybe not every single deer, you know. Sometimes I'll shoot a, especially during rifle season, you know, and it's time to just get the freezer full, and I'll go out and shoot shoot a couple does or something. Um, but it, it starts over every year, you know, because now you're in off season and you go eight months without hunting and then you, you got the build up again and it's coming and I'll start shooting my bow and practicing. And then that first day, you know, it's just like, it's like when you're a kid, you know, it's like the night before Christmas and you get to open your presents, you can't sleep. And it's, it's all that, you know, it's just so fun. Um, and it just gives me a purpose, you know, and, it's, yeah. and um, I enjoy doing it. Um, and it gets me out in nature and, uh, I don't know. You can't, that, like I said, you can't beat that adrenaline dump. Yeah, just to segue on that, too, is uh, just to get a little bit uh, psychological. A lot of the – now, you guys probably know this. There's something uh, – they used to say 21 a day veterans kill themselves. It's now actually around 40. So uh, – but when you said purpose, that kind of, you know, uh, got my, my gears turning. Purpose is uh, probably – if you would have asked all those guys, obviously you would stop them, but – some of the guys, you know, kill themselves in the parking lot of the VA. If you would ask them, you know, what's what's really going on? What's the big deal? They no no purpose. I don't have a purpose. So right there, uh, you just dial in. You can see the benefit of doing this. You know, getting into, uh, you know, get get into hunting. However, you need to do it with a buddy. You know, find somebody with land. Whatever. If you're blessed like me, very blessed. I have friends. I have people that own land. But uh, just the idea uh, of getting yourself a purpose, like, you know, what do you, and then get back into what it means to be a man, what it means to be created in the image of God, you know, and also this is on, uh, this is his first quote inside the book. We would be doing a disservice. We didn't, but he, he had, he quotes Genesis uh, 128. Uh, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over it. And uh, so that's really, that's really it. I mean, part of, uh, I mean, the essence of hunting is that, you know, we, we were created in the image of God. That means a lot of things. One of those things is uh, we dominate it. You know, it was given to us. Uh, yeah, we, we've screwed things up, but still, nonetheless, we, uh, uh, you know, we're sin abounds, grace abounds all the more, and we have, we have been given this. Uh, ability to to uh, regulate uh, the deer population, you know, and benefit from that. So this that's the essence of that. Just to get into this, get get spiritual here, uh, you know, get back into you know uh, finding a purpose. All the benefits of this, whatever you're going to hunt. I mean, mm-hmm. whatever that is, wherever you're at, uh, it, huge benefit. Hey, Brandon, let me let me ask you a question. Um, you had a benefit of a, a father that hunted and took you out and mm-hmm. showed you how to hunt. Um, what, what, what about these young boys now? Um, you know, even ones who live in our town here that, that maybe, um, I mean, I was, I was raised by a single mother. I didn't have a father. So, uh, she, my mom certainly wasn't taking me out hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did have neighbors though, and I was able to go hunt with my neighbors and my neighbor's dads and things like that. But, uh, for guys like me that were that were maybe um, uh, in a, in a single uh, parent home, okay, don't have a dad, um, how do they go, how how would they go about maybe experiencing this? And and is this something that maybe our veteran community ought to be trying to step up a little bit and maybe try to find these these young boys and take them out and have them experience this or or, or what? I think there's a couple things to talk about in here, um, and just to unload it right up front, I've I've actually recently um, had an opportunity to go on a free veteran hunt um, this January here in a couple of weeks. Um, I will be going to 
um, the E3 Ranch in Kansas, Missouri line um, with the Buck Commanders. They they um, are offering a, a veteran hunt. Uh, six guys from you know all over the place. Um, we get to come in, and their their focus is what we've been talking about: letting vets hang it out, no judgment, um, paying for everything, giving them the opportunity just to blow that steam off, be part of the boys, and hopefully go shoot a deer. You know, um, and that that is oh my gosh first of all i'm so grateful for having the opportunity to go do that you know this is the first time i've ever got to do anything like this um so there are programs out there that do that Uh, maybe not necessarily within the veteran community but there's other communities that are doing it for veterans Um, and everything that i've heard from these places and everybody that i've talked to says we need guys we need guys we can't fill these slots we want people to come and nobody's coming so i think maybe just getting the word out more um, cause you know, me sitting here, why, why? I mean, God, this is the opportunity of a lifetime, um, that I got here in a couple of weeks and just hearing the fact that they can't fill these slots says there's a need somewhere. I don't know what that is, but maybe just getting the word out. Um, other than that, you know, me writing this book, hopefully that'll share a little awareness. Like, Hey, you don't have to have a dad that, that taught you how to hunt when you're a kid. You can do it. You know, it's not hard. People just don't know, you know, and it's um, you just get a little bit of self knowledge and 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 go get in the woods, start somewhere, you know. Yeah, well, it's I, just uh, I, I don't know if I, you know Paul. I mean, I you know I you, we did talk about the fact there's an art and a science to it though. Um, so I do think it's important to have at least that first couple of times maybe have somebody out and kind of show you the ropes. Sure. Yeah. yeah you no, know, and the, and there is there's um, as I've been writing this book, it's been really unique to understand how I think, you know, cause I don't necessarily dissect how I think about it. I've just done it my whole life. It's just natural. Like Paul said earlier, you know, he, I didn't tell him a couple things. And so I didn't even think to tell you that. And it's, <laughs> um, um, and it's been a blessing to take Paul out because as you teach somebody something, it makes you realize, um, what you do and yeah. that there is a Knowledge lot more skills. to it than I'm, that I'm, I'm just taking for granted that there is a lot more to it. And there is a science behind a lot of this stuff. Um, That's where I was going to go is just, uh, you know, you don't have to go. I mean, it's great if you come back with an animal. Sure. It's great if you bring down this one of these glorious animals. They're beautiful. You know, just the way the Lord created them. They, the way they move and taste, all that stuff. It's awesome. The way the, uh, uh, but just the, just the idea of going out you know, and then the, the not only just the thrill of it, but just the anticipation of it, mm-hmm. right? That's that's what part of combat is that too. It's like, you know, you have uh, you you could go out and it could just be fisticuffs, or you could go out it could be, wow, you know, gun, guns blazing, but the idea is you're going out, you're getting ready, you're honing your craft, you're getting your gun ready, you're getting your kit ready, you're getting your truck ready. You get not only that, but then after you get you gain that kill, then you've got all the work involved. Oh, geez, yeah. You know, with uh, you know gutting it and cleaning it and preparing it, mm-hmm. and we even t- there's so much there uh, that that's part of that skill set mm-hmm. that uh, could could be you know future podcasts we're, we're to do it a full service, and and of course you have it on, on the uh, and then in the range time, all the stuff to, to but but just the my whole point is. It's enough just to kind of get into that stream of hunting where you're you're uh, you get in the mindset and you're getting all your stuff ready. And even if you don't come back with an animal, man, you still got it. You still got the the essence. If you could wring out the essence of what all that is, it's good. It's oh, good yeah. for your soul. Uh, and especially if you got a hunting buddy, you're just like you got a you know a camaraderie and you're like we're out there man ready to go and, and even if you come back empty hand it's like it's not a problem unless you go all season and get skunked which you know, I, well and even, I would even say there, just I mean, to touch hand. on that real quick I, I would say you need to be uh, prepared to come home empty handed because ninety yeah. percent of my hunts I do come home yeah. empty handed and that's what a lot of people don't realize is maybe not ninety. Well, maybe not. I think his percentage is pretty good. I do kill a lot of deer. (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you you bring up a a good point, both of you, and that is, um, even Paul, you were talking about your little trip with with Brandon out there, you worry. You had had a beautiful animal um, that you you saw. uh, In the scope. Mm -hmm. um, But you you did not take the shot. 
Yeah. My point is you came home empty handed, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. yeah. But all of the benefits of the hunt you still oh, yeah. retain. I retain all that. Uh, and yeah. even the decision probably not to take that shot was probably educational. What, what, what do you say, Brandon? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, it's very hard, at least for me, um, depending on the situation, to put your crosshairs you know, on an animal and have your finger on that trigger knowing that you have the power to take that life or not and then and then making that decision you know that is your god-given right and god has placed that for you to do that's um there is some power in that you know and there is some beauty in that you know it's 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 our decision to decide if we're going to take a life or not um, and i don't think we should take it for granted you know it's it's there for our our food our sustenance our enjoyment yeah. um however you want to look at it um, so I got to get this, cl- um, uh, this one story in here too. I yeah. got to sneak this in. So, uh, maybe he can elaborate, but I just set the stage. So Brandon's going out to a place he's been before and it's, uh, uh, he's got a climber on his back. He's got his 270 that he's uh, brought down a lot of beasts with. Right. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he walks in, he's going to, uh, he's probably right at the tree where he's going to set up shop and, uh, <laughs> and then, and that's when you see, you know, there's this a glorious animal. Uh, there's a lot <laughs> behind this story. That <laughs> I probably didn't, I probably said it too too uh, quick. No, but. no, this is a great story. I love this story. Um, I've been telling myself for for years now, probably three the last three years now. I haven't really um, shot a wall hanger. You know, just and what I mean by that is is something that I deem. Bigger than what I already have on the wall to justify getting a shoulder mount. They're expensive. You know, it's probably yeah. 700 bucks to mount a deer head on the wall. So it's going to have to be a good one, you know. And, and I've been telling myself the last three years in a row, every year, all right, this is my year. I'm going to get a good one. This is my year. I'm due. I'm due. I'm due a good buck, you know, because I spend so many hours in the woods, you know, every year. You know, it's obviously, statistically speaking, eventually I'm going to hook up. You know, yeah. the more time you can spend, the better uh, your your success rate's going to be but anyways so that's kind of I, I say that because i had been anticipating a wall hanger for some time now um and then the events leading up to this particular hunt you're talking about i would have never guessed that this would have been it you know it completely caught me with my pants down so to finish the story um yeah i had already missed the morning hunt the sun had already come up um, but it was during the rut, which is always a wild card. You know, that's when the deer are breeding and you never know what you're going to see. Um, so I didn't even head into the woods till it was probably 10 o'clock in the morning or so um, when I decided to walk in. <laughs> I was going into an area I had never hunted before, not one time, never did an ounce of recon uh, except for map. You know, I checked it out on the map, figured out it was state, you know, public land. Um, everything lined up. Um, I had to park across the highway, walk under a bridge, cross a creek, like it was a whole thing. And I, and I knew there was going to be nobody, nobody else is going to be hunting over there because it's hard to get to. And the average hunter is lazy, so I get to capitalize on that. So I figure if you go where nobody else is willing to go, then you're going to probably see things that nobody else is going to see. So, anyways, so I'm walking up this creek, and um, as you said, you know, I got to about where I wanted to to start looking for a tree, the, the science of the tree finding, and. And I was just standing on the ground with my climber on my back and this beautiful animal just came out of the creek. And when I first seen it, um, it had its head down and I could only see the body of the deer within 20 yards of me. It was, it was, it was incredible. My brain didn't even register that it was an animal that close to me. It's just something that I wasn't expecting. You know, normally you don't just walk up on them that close. And, um, and that thing lifted its head up. And I saw this just beautiful, big 10 point. Um, and I froze, you know, and he looked right in my general direction, but I was, I wasn't moving. So he didn't see me, you know, and, and then he put his head down and then I was able to raise up and, and get him with one shot and dropped him right in his tracks. Um, and I would have freaked out I mean, and spooked him. Phew. Yeah, but see that that takes discipline. I mean the yeah. whole thing. And and wow. again, you know, I was I was walking. It probably in. took a minute to raise your rifle. Uh, oh gosh, I mean the concept of time goes out the window. I mean the whole thing was over in probably wow. seven seconds. You know, and I I had walked in with anticipation of sitting in the tree for the whole rest of the day. 
Wow. And it was over in seven seconds. You know, I shot the biggest deer. Um, matter of fact, that's the, probably the biggest deer I've shot in North Carolina oh, in the last 13 years. Your back. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> That is a heck of a story. Didn't even go through the pain of uh, of climbing. I mean, it's just walking in. Well, the the pain of, uh, let's see, uh, lugging out your climber and your gun and dragging him out. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, the the work (laughs) starts when you pull the trigger because in order to go where nobody else goes, you also got to get out. And um, I had to to phone a friend to come help Uh, get him out of there. It was quite a drag. It was 300 (laughs) yards back to the road. Um, wow. and then we had to go over the, some rocks and under that bridge and back. It was, it was, a, it, it, I worked for it. Yeah. That was a beautiful pick yeah. when I saw that. I yeah, was, is I'll, he hanging? What's that? Is that your wall hanger? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the wall hanger. Yeah. I was immediately, uh, I was instantly jealous. I have to say, I thought, wow. Envious. I did. A, I just did glorious. a hero mount on him for now, but, um, I'm going to turn him into a shoulder mount. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful animal. But yeah, they, uh, you know, Brandon, you got a ton of stories. I do. I mean, uh, I've been I've been looking at the the book. Uh, you know, you got you got a big elk. Uh, you've got. Yep. Uh, I mean, I think you've probably hunted maybe f- a dozen a variety of animals. But yeah, from- I stick mostly to the deer. I mean, I do yeah. like small game hunting. Whatever whatever hunting season keeps me in the woods, you know, duck hunting. Uh, we'll come in here in a little bit so I can go shoot ducks and geese a little bit. And that's fun, you know, because then you get out on the water a little bit. Um, but small game's fun, you know, rabbits and squirrels. You know, I got a nine-year-old boy I'm bringing up, and yeah. uh, he's not not keen into sitting in a tree stand yet. Um, but he does show a little bit of interest in shooting um, and things like that. He wants to shoot a deer. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to foster that mm. in him a little bit. You know, I've had some dad fails leading up to um, – last couple seasons just trying to get him in there and he just doesn't like sitting in a tree but um doing that small game hunting with squirrels and rabbits Mm. and stuff that's more fun for a kid i think will help get him into it a little better yeah that's where i was going is uh kind of uh what's your what's your thing now yeah how do you how do you kind of how do you kind of bring the young ones up i mean what have you learned from that experience (sighs) man i'm still learning from that experience and i'm i'm failing epically in the learning process you know i had a moment um I think it was just about a week ago. I, I took my son out, and uh, my dad came up to visit from Florida. And I thought, how great would that be to be able to go hunt with my dad and my son, you know? And and he'd already told my son already told me a little bit this year that he didn't really want to hunt. So I was kind of laying off of him a little bit. But I prepped him and I said, "Hey, Grandpa's coming up. You know, it'd really mean a lot to me if you'd come come hunting with us one day. You know, just a couple hours, we'll go get in the woods, and um, I'll be happy." He said, "Okay, Daddy, we'll go. We'll go deer hunting." And, after about 40 minutes in the tree, he was, he was about done. And I kind of got mad at him and probably was a little harsher with him than I should have been, you know, which isn't going to help my cause in the long run. So I'm, I'm hoping God give me a little more patience for dealing with that. But, um, and, and it's just, it, it's coming from a good place. My expectations are just probably a little too high. I just want him to enjoy it. I want him to enjoy it like I do. You know, but I just need to understand that, you know, not everybody's a hunter. Not everybody's going to be a hunter, especially to the level that I am. Um, hey, let me jump on something there, Brandon. Uh, to, something I've been uh, relearning is uh, patience myself, <laughs> right? So uh, living in the digital age where we have uh, instant everything, instant communication. I can com- communicate with somebody on this side of the world in a few seconds, whatever, and uh Something that uh, that I was uh, reminded of is, you know, when you're hunting, you're out in the woods, that doesn't happen. You got to wait. You got to be patient. Mm-hmm. You have to. You're stalking. You're scanning. You're you're uh, taking in the surroundings. You're reading the wind. You're you're all those things. All that primal awesome sauce. You have to bring it, in, and all that instantaneous stuff is is pretty much gone. And so you have to. Okay. It's a lot of discipline involved. And this is what I love about it. it. It's it's bringing me back to being disciplined, mm-hmm. and it's reminding me that patience is so important with with uh, with so many things. I mean, if one of the most patient, probably the, one of the greatest virtues of a hunter is got to be patience. So I mean, like, you, you're just going to quit, and then you you miss, you you, you screw up the whole hunt. Yeah, so this is huge. It's, it's the antithesis of the 21st century information age. It it is yeah. in a lot of ways. It is. I mean, yeah, we use Onyx Hunt. Yeah, we use 
uh, the science and all that stuff, but something I'm just latching onto that. This is something I really got out of it that uh, in a way you might have rescued me from becoming a complete, you know, huge uh, D bag. <laughs> uh, and, and that can help you too as you, you, you get into this, you fall into this rut of just information age and you just, you forget, hey, it's just the simple things, man. Getting into the woods. Well, I'm wondering if maybe so that's. Important. I'm wondering if maybe that's some of the issues that, uh, and you may not be alone, um, that fathers may be dealing with mm. when trying to take their young, oh, yeah. young no kids, doubt. right, and taking them out of sort of the environment that they're living in, right, a really quick, fast paced, yeah. you know, instant gratification environment, and now uh, introducing them yeah. to a more of a natural. Yep. Uh, yeah, if you right. You, and his son is a is a yep. great young man. It, he, he would be typical for any child now. Oh, they're just age, they're, yeah. they're yeah, used to they're true. used to certain things, right? And now they're like, well, hold on now. Now I got to I got to relearn. I got to learn some new skills, and I got to have to have discipline. And and uh, yeah, that's and so you're you're uh, you're running into that. That's and I I acknowledge that in myself as a fifty year old man, fifty one year old, like, hey, wow, I'm developing these bad habits with my cell phone and my computer and all that stuff, oh, which yeah. is good, but you need, it has its place. And that's what really uh, one, one good uh, uh, element that's brought into what I've learned is relearned is that. So, so, you're, so you're not like skinny TikTok videos while you're up at the tree stand? Okay, now, now. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. All right, so you caught me. I Same might have, but not with that. Uh, we do, uh, I do, if I have something, like I'll text a friend while we're, you know, we're oh, there. Sure. Like, hey, I'll send my location. That's I'm pretty normal. But honestly, I'll put my, my cell on silent, and I'll stow that thing. Yeah, my, my point is, I mean, if you want to be a successful hunter, I mean, you got to put the technology yeah. away. You put it away, man. That's yeah, part I'm, of the I'm idea. guilty of it. I mean, you, yeah, you sit there for literally Especially hours one day and hours, was, and yeah, you're going to flip through your phone a little bit. But I think I sent you like a book cover idea. Yeah. When uh, and, I, and you're like, hey, man, uh, the deer aren't going to kill themselves. <laughs> So you kind of need to put the soul. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So, I mean, that's my point. Right. You know, you can be really savvy with that, but the, the whole idea is you know, your soul is like, I guess what I'm saying is your soul can be like screaming for to, to, to pull the plug on some of this crap. You got to get out there and just well, be that, the de- And that defeats the whole purpose of it, too. I mean, yeah. and if you look at the white-tailed deer for what it is, that's probably one of the most elusive creatures in North America. Um, the yeah. first deer I killed this year... Um, as a matter of fact, I was hunting this hillside and there was no cover. I can see the whole hillside and I know those deer come down that hillside every day, every evening. And so first day of bow season, September 9th this year, I had my bow and I was sitting on this hillside coming down to this little, um, mineral block I put down on the bottom for them. And these two does had come down that hillside. I did not even see them and they, and she was at 29 yards from my tree before I even saw her, you know, and if you're sitting there looking at your phone, yeah, and even or, or I wasn't sleeping. even on my phone and I didn't see him come down the hill, <laughs> yeah. you know, right. I wasn't even on my phone. So if you're on, if you're on your phone, you're, you're not going to see him. contemplating life. Yeah. I mean, you know, exactly. Yeah. I've, uh, they're, they're sneaky. That climber you loan me is pretty comfy. I think <laughs> I've, I've, I wonder how many have passed by just like laughing, like oh, amateur hour. I'm up there sawing logs. <laughs> 30 feet in the air, maybe you know, 20 feet in the air. You know, wear your seatbelt. Yeah. But, yeah, that's all that is, uh, you know, I, I'll be honest. Uh, in some ways, I don't want to, you know, make you feel too too like a big head, but uh, a lot of ways I've, uh, I've been kind of going back to where I was before, like reset 20 years, mm-hmm. you know, uh, from 02. That's awesome. And I'm like, wow, re-experience. Oh, yeah, this is this is great. Know, and you just take pride in your weapon and cleaning it and getting your ammo and go, oh, what kind of, how many grain is that? Mm-hmm. And you go, yeah, that deer won't stand a chance with that. And you know, you're th- you're getting back into this thing. Mm-hmm. That's what's awesome about it. I know that's what your book will do. I sure And much so. more. But I mean, uh, so what's, uh, uh, one, one thing I wanted to get out too is what's your, what's your big goal uh, with, the, with, with this, this book? book? Yeah. What do you, what do you want to do? What's, what do you want this book to do? You know, I and I and I started writing this book before any of that stuff even entered my mind. And and honestly, even right now, I'm not even sure. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, bring glory to God is is my ultimate goal in anything that I do. 
And and now, you know, how do you say, well, how do you glorify God deer hunting? Well, you've just given me a platform to do that. So now I can take my entire life experience in deer hunting and yeah. find a way to hopefully glorify him. And if I can get some awareness um, and some some knowledge out to somebody who wants to get into this thing and I can help one person get in the woods and shoot a deer, then then this thing was a success. Yeah. Well, it's already a success. And I, I know there's a, you know, we have uh, veterans that listen to this this uh, podcast. So that could be you, you know, wherever you, I just want to say this too. It may sound a little strange, but this is the silly, silly season, right? Uh, and so we're, we got Christmas uh, around the corner. So that's you, man. Just, uh, we've had friends. I had friends that uh, they never called and they just decided, hey, I just don't want to go on anymore. So I want to be a Debbie Downer here and just say, hey, look, don't don't do that. You know, uh, you know, reach out to a friend. No, I know, think, I and, think... Then, and then this is definitely a way to get you, you know, reeled back in uh, to to everything. Yeah, it is reeled Important. reeled back in, uh, Brandon. Reel. Um, listen, the I think you brought it up earlier. I, I think you you, uh, you you touched on it earlier. It's, it's about service. It's about uh, giving back. It's about um, having a purpose. Um, and, and I think this is a fantastic vehicle for doing that. And yeah. it's not just, it's not just like reconnecting with, um, you know, who we are as men and kind of the, the primal skills and kind of like, you know, um, exercising the essence of what we're supposed to be doing in the world. Um, but I also think I, I also like the aspect of where you're talking about, um, teaching others and getting others out there. And so not, not even for your, just your own, um, uh, enlightenment and your own, uh, um, uh, improvement, um, but also just kind of helping others. I mean, we, we run into that theme all the time, Paul, where we talk to veterans that have gone through whatever struggles that they've gone through in life. And the, in the, the common thread that always runs through is, is, is they found healing when they were, when they found, when they did something for somebody else. Mm-hmm. That way, it was always that. It was always, well, you know, I finally decided to give of myself and, and, and take this on as a project. It was, it was get out of my own head, help somebody else. And that seemed to always be like the common thread when you talk to these guys. And that's how they got over whatever was, was, uh, was going through um, their issues. And so I, 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 love, I love this book. And I, I, I think, uh, I think more guys need to get out in the woods. Yeah. Regardless of what they're doing. Absolutely. No, it's, and it, and it's ironic that we're doing this podcast right now when I have that opportunity myself in a couple of weeks to go to another ranch and hunt with someone else whose purpose in life is to bring camaraderie together, you know, obviously with the, with the purpose of, of healing, restoration, to get away. Um, remember, you know, God is sovereign and he is in control to, to create that environment you know, maybe, maybe he's pointing me in that direction. You know, I've been an instructor in my, my last 13 years of my career. I'm used to teaching. I'm used to, to doing those things. And if I can do that through this book a little bit, you know, I don't care if somebody calls me up and says, Hey, let's go deer hunt. I would love that. You know, it's been a, it's been amazing with Paul the last uh, couple of months taking him through it. And, and I love teaching and giving back and yeah, maybe this is a, a start of something. I don't know. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, and I know you guys got to get out to the woods. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I did want to, uh, yeah, I did want to make sure that uh, we were able to bring in your guest. Uh, so, uh, my it's, friend, yeah, yeah. we want to bring yeah. you on in too. Say, say a few words about this guy. What do you have to say about this guy that's in the good? I praise Jesus Christ every day for this man. I've been hunting with him personally probably over a hundred times uh, over the years. And I've sh- he's got me back into hunting when I needed it. He got me back into hunting. He got me uh, letting go of the many deployments mm. and not refocusing on killing Bambi, but refocusing on going back to my roots. Mm. Uh, animals are territorial. So are people. There's something very animalistic about us <clears throat> but even as you mentioned in genesis i mean because of sin he gave us these animal skins as coverings yeah and uh there's a lot more that we could do with these animals than just food um 
I just tanned a hide up in Maine uh, from a little spiker uh, three point. You know, after seeing five giant bucks in Maine, I decided to spend that extra time into tanning a three point buck hide because it's not just about the trophy. It's about reconnecting our roots. And I will also, I definitely have to mention this for all the ladies out there that think that they can't get into hunting. Mm-hmm. My mother taught me how to hunt and I've, I've, uh, I've harvested quite a few deer. <laughs> uh, the first time I ever went hunting was with my mother, Flagstaff, Arizona, Indiana, big corn bucks. Uh, she always had me in the woods. And I think as military guys, <clears throat> let me take a breath. As military guys, we already have these awesome skills of being in the woods, being in creation, creation nature. I mean, God reveals himself to us. And uh, I've learned so much about these animals. And there's a sense where the animals seem to know something about us that we don't as fallen creatures. And it's it's almost like un- unadulterated knowledge of life you see we came from the ground dirt just like the animals the ladies bless their heart i like the boast especially with all my daughters and my wife they came from man yet man comes from woman and my mother probably the best hunter i've ever met and she raises green berets straight up and uh so i didn't want to leave the ladies out on this well 80, said. 80% yeah. of the population of Maine hunts. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. sort of a different a different place. And for that matter, there's not as many deer. So we kind of have it made down here in the south with not a lot of people hunting. But anybody can do it. Mm-hmm. A 10-year-old child, it's really you're just going to the grocery store. If we get back to that uh, primal instinct... It's the best, most natural way to go to the grocery store. The deer, choose the cud, has a split hoof. I mean, in terms of health, a healthy food outside of all the, uh, the naysaying and the, the different types of propagation of uh, ideas. Uh, and the 2,000 laws or whatever that might keep people away from hunting, if you can find the spirit of hunting, the spirit of reconnecting with God, reconnecting with creation, and actually owning that dominion mandate, you know, from Genesis, not following a list of rules, but going out there, they're all communicating out there in these woods. All the animals, all the trees. <laughs> I heard something funny. The, uh, the corn has ears, the beans talk, <laughs> and the potatoes have eyes. And let me tell you, when a crow tells you where a deer's at after you shot it, it's it's really cool. When a when a bird tells you where you should put your your stand according to the wind or a squirrel or a chipmunk, because of their knowledge of the other animals in their territory, it's very inviting to become a part of them and reconnect with nature, reconnect with God, um, and then to even participate in some of the urban archery things that are becoming more and more available because the white-tailed deer actually flocks to people you're going to see a lot more white-tailed deer around these cities and stuff like they want to be fed you know and uh so there's great opportunities no matter where you're at to look up your local hunting availabilities and take complete advantage of your god-given freedoms and liberties i i can't wait i don't read any books besides Word of God, Brandon, but I'm going to read your book. Well, appreciate so I'm that. looking forward to thank it. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. And I'm getting ready to go hunt with him, too. So yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about hunting with this man. He's very passionate about his craft. Yeah, Blue, I'm glad you're here today. Um, and But I, I don't think I could say anything to top that. That was good. I mean, we could probably get 10 podcasts out of you, too. But, uh, <laughs> Brandon, if you could, uh, in, the, in the spirit of Christmas, if you could close us out with, uh, with prayer. It would be my pleasure. Heavenly Father, um, first and foremost, I just want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and um, thank you for sending him uh, to be the Savior of the world. And um, Fast forward to today, uh, Lord, I just want to thank you 
for this platform. I want to thank you for these men, uh, these good Christian men who have uh, graciously invited me here um, to talk about you know, ways that we can um, ultimately um, come back to you and give you glory, God, and uh, just finding different ways uh, to do that, God, and this just being one of them. Um, Lord, again, thank you for your son. Thank you for um, uh, his birth. And um, in this upcoming season of, of Christmas, Lord, we just want to remember that, um, um, cliche as it may sound, Jesus is the reason for the season. Um, Lord, so we just thank you for that. And um, hopefully that this this book will kinder a spirit of, of getting guys back together, like-minded guys back together uh, to remember why we're here, Lord, and that is ultimately to give you the glory. Um, all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Pinelander Podcast. If you enjoy our unique content, please consider supporting our sponsors. Soft News provides special operations news from around the world. It's where Paul and I go to keep abreast of what's going on within the soft community. Check them out at soft.news. American Partisan is the vanguard movement of Western civilization. Be sure to check them out at AmericanPartisan.org. And, of course, Blacksmith Publishing. We've been serving the warrior class since 2013. They have a great titles written for warriors by warriors. If you're looking for uh, excellent reference material or just want to enjoy a great novel, be sure to check out the bookstore. Or if you enjoy hanging out with warriors, come spend some time with us in the G-Base over at the Pinelander Podcast. All that's at blacksmithpublishing.com. Until our next meeting, stay mentally and tactically smart, physically and spiritually strong, and socially astute. To each other, we pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. May God continue to bless Pineland.